Hello and welcome to our reflection from Christchurch Chorleywood today. My name is Michelle McHale and the verses I have chosen today are from the book of Romans, which is in the New Testament, um, in, from chapter 5, starting at the end of verse 2 through to the end of verse 5. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. There's a lot in these short verses. And I don't know where you're at today. I don't know whether you are part of the Christchurch family or if you are a visitor to our page and are searching. But whoever you are, however your life is, the good news in these verses is for you. I love this little section which begins and ends with hope. Hope of the glory of God and hope that does not disappoint us. God's purposes for us are good whatever is going on for us. From the beginning, God's plan was that we would be in perfect relationship with him, but our disobedience towards God, outlined in the events in the Garden of Eden, broke our relationship with him. We went from walking with him in the garden to being ashamed and hiding from him. In this reading, the glory of God relates to what God intended us to be. And this is from um, refers back to Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. We are the crown of his creation, made in his image, in his likeness, male and female, making us rulers over the fish, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground. Blessed by God. The overarching story of the Bible is about the relationship between God and people. Here we see that God's plan is to restore us to our former glory. He does this through the willing, sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on a Roman cross 2,000 years ago, where Jesus took on himself the full force of the punishment for humanity's rebellion against God. Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection paved the way for the pouring out of God's love through the Holy Spirit into our hearts and the restoration of our relationship with God if we acknowledge our guilt and ask God for his forgiveness. So whether this is an old or new story, let its deep truths renew and restore you today. As well as rejoicing in hope, we are also encouraged to rejoice in our suffering. As we read on, we can learn that in God's economy, suffering has value and purpose. This is a bold claim, which may even seem offensive. How can suffering possibly have value and purpose? We will never have all the answers to this, but have we realised that we do have choice in how we respond to circumstances that cause us to suffer? And it's this choice which may just begin the transformation of suffering into something of eternal value. In the face of suffering of all kinds, we can choose to become bitter and resentful. We can choose to struggle through the pain alone. We can choose to seek temporary respite in all sorts of things like food, alcohol, distraction and so on. We can choose to blame God and harden our hearts towards him. None of these are great options, yet it is what so many of us unwittingly choose to a greater or lesser degree. My experience even as a Christian is that I have at times chosen these unhelpful dead ends. The Christian response in suffering is to turn back to God again and again and again. The Psalms are full of anguished, gritty, honest prayers to God. The Psalmists encourage us that despite our physical, tangible circumstances, to place our hope and trust in the eternal God who has shown himself to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And the truth is that in this life, suffering will come. We are mortal and we may never know why we have to suffer the things that we do. 
Remember Job in the Old Testament who suffered terribly and never really knew why. And when Jesus was dying on the cross, he asked, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew why he was there, but in the depths of his suffering, he still asked that question. And perhaps today our conversation with God about suffering needs to start with the why question. But we need to make sure we allow God to move us to a place of trusting in him. Through my own personal experience of having to face up to my own mortality and suffering from a very young age and having wrestled with it ever since, I'm able to say with confidence that the only refuge, the only place of assurance, the only place of peace is in God himself. In himself, God is the answer and our safe passage in getting through whatever we may face. And as Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And the only way to discover for yourself the truth of this is to take that first or next step towards him. Amen. And so finally, the song I have chosen for us today is Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. Just sit back and allow yourself to feel the comfort and love of God in Christ for you through these words and music.